when Donald Trump is asking Pence, hey, can you throw out the election because I don't like the results, which is a real thing that happened, by the way, as much as I would like to say that's not true, that is counted as an official action because these are the roles of the president and vice president deciding how to uh, count the electoral votes. That is insanity to me. If Biden were to do anything yes, even remotely you, similar, Republicans would lose their minds. You, you, you can dispute or, or you know, uh, object to any actions that Trump takes, but what during yet another blatantly pro-Trump anti-Biden panel hosted by Pierce Morgan, liberal political streamer Destiny humiliated Morgan and Daily Wire contributor Michael Knowles by defending President Biden's record, by debunking MAGA lies about peace in the Middle East under Donald Trump, and by demonstrating a vastly superior command of the recent Supreme Court decision about presidential immunity. But before we unpack all of that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. I think the full conversation is like 50 minutes long. You should definitely check out the panel on Pierce Morgan Uncensored. And here at this channel, we like to hype up liberals and progressives who stick it to enlightened centrists and conservatives and MAGA cultists. And uh, Pierce Morgan and Michael Knowles definitely qualify to one extent or another. So in this first clip, uh, Michael Knowles makes the claim repeats the common MAGA talking point that there was peace in the Middle East under Donald Trump and we had world peace and there were no new wars. And destiny shuts him down pretty quick. During Trump, we had peace in the Middle East, believe it or not. We had mm -hmm. the Abraham Accords and Israel and Saudi Arabia becoming buddies. There's a town in Israel named <laughs> after Donald Trump. Okay, I'm actually gonna give the final, final word to you, Destiny, because you were reeling in horror through some of that. Uh, from Michael, I'm not quite I, sure why, because it made a lot of sense to me. It's easy to think that uh, something is good because you look at only the surface level of things. You go, oh, well, there were no new wars, so it must have been great. People say peace in the Middle East and forget that Iran attacked Saudi Arabia proper for the first time in all of history. Donald Trump did nothing. The entire Great March of Return, the border riots. Trump. Raged, raged on. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the that's not peace of the Middle East. The entire border rights raged on 2018, 2019 in in Palestine and in Israel. Donald Trump did absolutely nothing. The idea that there was peace in the Middle East here when the region was about to boil over and it finally did on October 7th is just laughable. It shows like a, a total misunderstanding of anything that's happened in the Middle East. What, what was the peace? Is it the ongoing civil war in Yemen? Was it the ongoing civil war in Syria? Was it the ongoing destabilization in Iraq? Was it the ongoing protests in, in the Gaza Strip? Like it's just it's a joke. To me, but on that on that point of full agreement between all three. Again, phenomenal response from Destiny there. So again, this is a common MAGA talking point, this idea that Donald Trump was the great light bringer, the great peacemaker, uh, when in reality he didn't. Again, they're banking, MAGA is banking on you memory holding all these various concurrent conflicts which happened under the Trump administration. But the reality is we're actually in one fewer war because of President Biden. We were still under Trump in Afghanistan. That was America's longest war, and that happened, but it was still going on when Donald Trump was president. Under President Biden, we got out, so that's actually one less war that the United States is directly involved in. Now, you know, uh, Michael Knowles wants to say, well, what about what's going on in Gaza or what's going on in Ukraine? The United States is not directly involved in it. We are not waging those wars. We did not start those wars. We don't have boots on the ground. And again, if you want to say, well, there are various conflicts going on under Biden's watch, that was objectively the case. Uh, for Donald Trump as well. So Michael Knowles is lying about that. Destiny has a vastly superior command of the facts. Then, of course, you know, Michael Knowles tries to sneak in there, uh, demonstrating that perhaps he understands more than he wants you to believe, which would just make him a liar rather than an idiot. Well, we assassinated the top Iranian general under Trump. And in response to that, Iran attacked a U.S. military base and uh, injured I think gave brain injuries to 11 U.S. soldiers, and Donald Trump didn't do anything in response to that. So again, it's just objectively untrue, but that's what MAGA is banking on. So in response, or rather at a different point in the debate, Destiny repeatedly pointed out the skewed priorities of people like Pierce Morgan focusing on this disastrous debate between President Biden and Trump. And it was not good for Donald Trump either, but Pierce doesn't care about that. And instead of you know, not focusing on much more dangerous things like the fact that the Supreme Court of the United States wants to make Donald Trump and just presidents in general God kings above the rest of us. If Donald Trump is taking insane, again, the Supreme Court ruling today is unbelievable. The idea that instead on today's show, we're going to focus on whether or not Biden had a bad debate performance is just reflective of the of the. I don't want to say agenda in a negative way, but of what you want to talk about today on this program. Like, I think that no, the what, decisions that are being made right now, legislatively in the Supreme Court, are more important, or, or that are being made in the Supreme Court. You know are more why that's happening? Whether or not Biden has a bad. You know why it's happening? Because Trump was able to put three judges on the court in one term. 
You know why that was? Because you put up a terrible candidate, Hillary Clinton. It was incredibly polarizing, very arrogant, very superior. And she got flatlined by Trump when no one saw it coming on the. So again, they try to, <laughs> he's trying to blame Democrats for the fact that a 6 3 conservative supermajority on the United States Supreme Court just, again, elevated presidents of the United States to God kings. It, it, it's so funny. It's like Republicans have no agency whatsoever. If Democrats do a bad thing, it's on Democrats. If Republicans do a bad thing, it's also on Democrats. The flow chart always goes back to Democrats as far as peers is concerned. Republicans have no agency. They can do no wrong. And if they do wrong, you got to grade them on a curve because it's probably a Democrat that made them do it. Now, if a Democrat does something wrong, can you blame a Republican for it? No, of course not. You have to have personal responsibility. This is how the thought process works for enlightened centrists like Piers Morgan. But again, Destiny is right. It is objectively more important to talk about what's going on at the United States Supreme Court rather than you know, relitigating the, uh, again, disastrous debate between Biden and Trump. But the priorities are where the priorities are. I'll also point out before we play the next clip, you can say Hillary Clinton was not a good candidate. She lost, but she was actually more popular than Donald Trump because she won the popular vote by three million, three million more votes than Donald Trump. So whatever you want to say about her and how polarizing she was. She's just objectively more popular and less polarizing than Donald Trump. The reason that Donald Trump was because of the Electoral College, right, which is affirmative action for Republicans. But again, Pierce will never acknowledge that. He believes that Donald Trump is or was more popular than Hillary Clinton. It's just objectively untrue. Hillary Clinton was more popular, and Donald Trump has never won the popular vote against a Democratic rival. But again, Pierce doesn't care about that. So now we'll turn to a, a, a greater in-depth conversation between Knowles and Destiny about the Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity. They're, they're inveighing because they say we should be talking about the immunity case. Well, but part of the articulation of, I just was reading the decision, uh, was that, look, this is the first time that you've got a president who's being prosecuted in this way. And that's the problem because the vast majority of Americans, right, left, and center, have been saying in survey after survey that they view the prosecutions of Trump as primarily politically motivated. They view this as kind of corrupt, and that's one. Let's stop that right there for just a second. So uh, yes, there are polls which say that particularly the New York case against Donald Trump, Americans viewed it as politically motivated, but polls also show that when it comes to the more serious cases like the January 6th federal prosecution, the classified documents prosecution, most Americans overwhelmingly support the prosecution of Trump on these things, okay? The thing that Democrats suck on that we're missing is this blind allegiance to a leader, literally no matter what he does. It is the, it is the engine that powers uh, Republicans. It allows them to lie for their leader. It allows them to excuse, excuse horrendous actions by the leader. Um, it allows them to look at a president and for after decades of saying, oh, we need to limit the power of government. Oh, we need to limit the power. Say, well, maybe the president should actually be above most criminal prosecution. Also, as a quick thing, you keep saying that, no, it's just partial immunity for official acts. What is an official act of the president? If you actually listen right. to the oral arguments that were presented before the Supreme Court, what that act even is, and the ability to even probe for it, is stuff right well, now I that is now a, presumed to be immune. Well, the, for the, instance, just, just, a real quick, just a real quick, just a real quick thing. When when uh, when Donald Trump is asking Pence, hey, can you throw out the election because I don't like the results, which is a real thing that happened, by the way, as much as Trump like to say, that's not true. That is counted as an official action because these are the roles of the president and vice president deciding how to uh, count the electoral votes. That is insanity to me. If Biden were to do anything Destiny, even remotely have, similar, Republicans would lose their minds. Have you, have, have you, have you read the decision? I, I know it just came out this morning, but have you, have you gone through the decision yet? Uh, I read up to page 25, and in part of it, they uh, they I can read it out to you. He explicitly calls out that whenever the the president and vice president discuss their official responsibilities, they engage in official conduct, meaning that uh, yeah. presiding over the January 6th certification proceeding at which members – yes, so that did count as official conduct. So if you thought that he was trying to do a coup, try to steal the election by saying, hey, uh, do you think you can throw those votes out? Well, that's beyond prosecution. You, you, you can dispute or, or you know, uh, object to any actions that Trump takes, but what, it, it is simply the case that when a president is carrying out his duties and is speaking to his subordinates in the White House, that is obviously official business. If he were to bring in a bunch of, I don't know, drug, drug dealers and hookers or something, that would probably be an unofficial crime. Not So you can see why Knowles is stammering there, because. Destiny has a greater command of the facts, right? When, 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 I mean, when, he, when, he, when he's like talking to members of his staff, yeah, okay, listen. The idea that a president, any president, Republican or Democrat, should be permitted 
to speak to their staff about the commission of a crime, right? Which is what is being alleged by Jack Smith that Donald Trump is the sitting president engaged in the commission of a, of a conspiracy to defraud the American people by interfacing with his Justice Department and his vice president to try to throw out votes to steal a free and fair election. The idea that that's not criminal because the people with whom he was talking works for him, therefore it's an official act and you can't prosecute him for it. You can't even probe it as part of you know, the a part of, of another crime. It's an official act. You can't prosecute the act and you can't probe the act itself for motivation as part of a separate crime. That's an extraordinary latitude that Trump is being given here. And it's indefensible. And again, that's why you see Michael Knowles struggle with that, because just the reality is it's just on its face ludicrous. Well, yeah, sure, he can interface with his employees to kind of commit a crime, or, and, and, and that would be an official act. And of course, that's ridiculous. Why on earth would we ever probe that or prosecute it? But hey, if he ever, if a sitting president ever brings in like drug dealers, people who aren't on U.S. government payroll and tries to commit a crime, well, he can be prosecuted for that. Maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past the Supreme Court. Say, well, you know what? It's entirely possible that you know, engaging with the public and a drug user, drug dealer is part of the public. That's an official act from chief executive, head of state to a, an American citizen. I, can we really like actually probe that? Can we really prosecute that? Sounds like an official act to me. I wouldn't put it past the Supreme Court. They impose no limiting principle on their ridiculous assessment of presidential immunity. But the last thing I'll say here, uh, since again, Destiny, just impeccable performance there. He also defends President Biden's economic record. I, the idea that a Republican would demand a full physical assessment from a president when they wouldn't even demand Trump's taxes is hilarious to me. <laughs> um, the idea of not being able to answer the call in the middle of the night, I mean, it's already happened. We've had it with Ukraine. We've had it with Israel. Like Donald, or not Donald Trump. Donald Trump did not show leadership when Iran attacked Saudi Arabia and he stood by and did nothing. He didn't show leadership when he abandoned our Kurdish allies in Syria for absolutely no reason. Uh, Biden has shown leadership. Whether you like it or not, whether you like how he's dealt with it or not, um, he has has shown leadership and the ability to bring allies together for Ukraine. He has shown leadership and the ability to force Israel to simultaneously show restraint while still remaining faithful as an ally. So, I mean, like we can make fun of a debate performance all you want, but we can compare the legislative records of both presidents and we can compare their actions in office. You can, you know, but here's the problem. You can, but here's the problem with that is that it's just not cutting. And Pierce just deflects instantly to polling. See, this is what's interesting to me. Conservatives and centrists, when it's convenient, when it hurts Democrats, they'll appear to appeal to popularity. They'll say, well, listen, sure, you have the facts on your side, but what about our feelings? What about how people feel? That's perfectly valid, right? Because at the end of the day, you can have all the facts in the world, but if people feel in a way that's opposite to the facts and then they vote on it, a vote's a vote, right? But imagine an alternate scenario where the facts were squarely on the side of the Republicans and destiny came in and said, well, listen, you know, polls say this about Trump, this about Trump. Pierce would say, well, that's not true. What about the facts? Those are feelings, destiny or whatever, like whatever he would say in his British accent. They constantly move the goalposts. He can't concede. They will not concede. Biden just has an objectively better legislative and executive record than Trump. They can't do that without then appealing to the polls, but they would never tolerate the reversal coming from a liberal or progressive against a conservative. Remember, Michael Knowles' boss or his you know, compatriot at the Daily Wire, he's the guy who invented the facts don't care about your feelings, gang. That's his motto. That's his mantra. Except feelings apparently matter more than facts when it advantages Republicans and cuts against Democrats. Food for thought. Great performance by Destiny. Let me know what you think in the comments.